Corel Painter workspaces are highly customizable, but I don't believe the average user takes advantage of this powerful function. In this video, I would like to explore how Corel Painter workspaces can improve your workflow. So, what is a workspace? Well, I like to think of it as a virtual art studio. And like my studio at home, a workspace contains tools, brushes, paint, papers, and all sorts of art supplies. In my home studio, I keep the supplies in drawers, shelves, on the walls, just about anywhere imaginable. It's the same thing with the Corel Painter workspace, but the drawers and shelves are the menus, the panels and palettes, and the toolbars. If I set my home studio up for pastels, it's difficult to clean up and reset for watercolor, but that isn't the case with the virtual studio workspace. With Painter, I can create multiple workspaces and switch between them seamlessly and quickly. I can even arrange the way the workspace looks and save that arrangement. So, how do I customize a workspace? Well, first, let's look at the default workspace that comes with Painter. If I go to Window, Workspace, I'll see that I'm in the default workspace. I have made some additional workspaces, as you can see, but when I first open Painter, the default workspace is the only one available. The parts of a workspace that are visible on my screen make up the workspace arrangement or the arranged palette, which in this case is the default palette found under Window, Arrange Palettes, Default. Notice that there are multiple Arrange Palettes under this menu, and each is highly customizable. The default Arrange Palette has a brush selector, which opens to the li Brush Library panel, containing Painter 2016 Brush Library with all of its categories and variants. If I click on the Option button, I see that Painter comes with four brush libraries. I can create more brush libraries, more categories, and more variants to further customize my workspace. Other items visible in the default arranged palette are the toolbox layout, the media layout, the navigator, color, mixer, color set, layers, and channel panels nested. When panels are nested like this, it is called a palette. I like to keep my default workspace clean, so the first thing I do is create a new workspace. I go to Window, Workspace, and click on New. I'm asked to name my workspace and to select a workspace that will be the starting point. At first, my only option is the default workspace. But as I add workspaces, then I can use any of them as my starting point or my base. I will call this one Video Demo. And I click Save. I check to see if I'm in the new workspace. Ah, now the fun can begin. I can customize my new workspace any way I want. And I'm going to start by selecting a different Arrange Palette. I come over to Arrange Palettes, and I select my favorite, which is the Simple Arrange Palette, because it gets rid of a lot of visible clutter that I don't use, and it adds a different toolbar and command bar. I don't particularly like the position of the Simple Toolbar or the Command Bar. I also prefer the brush selector to the way brushes are selected on the simple toolbar. And since I'm working with watercolor, I don't like having to run through all of these different categories to find the ones I need. But I can change all of that. Let me switch to another demo workspace. Notice I move the simple toolbar and the command bar to the right. I change the orientation of the command bar by going to Edit, Preferences, 
interface and selecting in the command bar layout the large icon single column. Then I went to Windows and I added back the property bar and the brush selector. Brush selector here and property bar here. Now, once that was done, I went to Window, Arrange Palettes, and saved the layout as Skips Simple. Are you beginning to see how I can set my workspace up and arrange palettes to make my workflow easier? But what about all those categories that were in the previous workspace? I can drag the ones I need up to the top, but that would still leave the brush control panel cluttered. I prefer to hide the unnecessary brush categories. Right click, hide category. Right click, hide category. To bring them all back, go to the option button and select show all categories. I can further customize the workspace by adding a custom color set. First, I need to open up my color set panel. I want to take it out of the nested palette. And then I'm going to open the option button and import a color set. I'm going to select the color set of my choice, which is the traditional Japanese colors. Now I have the color set with the color set library that I want to use. I place it where I would like to keep it. In this case, I'm going to move it right over here at the top. OK, now all I have to do is go to Arrange Palettes, Save Layout, and I will save it with the same name and say OK. It tells me that the palette already exists, and I say, yes, I want to replace it. I can make multiple workspaces and multiple arranged palettes. In this demo, I started from scratch to create the workspace, but I find it much easier to have one big workspace that contains everything. All my custom libraries, categories, variants, all my custom papers, flow maps, and other media libraries. It contains everything. If I create a new workspace from the big workspace, all I have to do is remove what I do not want, and I find that is a quicker way to work. Once finished, I save the workspace. I've only shown a small fraction of what is possible in customizing a workspace. Any customizable function in Painter, and there are many, can be used to design a workspace that will improve your workflow. Now that I have my new workspace, I can continue working on this watercolor.